Is that recording? I keep pressing the button down there. I keep fucking it up. Hi guys, uh, easy in the house. Um, not very well easy actually. So I'm just doing this short thing because there won't be a talkie bit this evening. I'm having an early night, hopefully. Uh, anyway, thank you, Sir Kane. Sir Kane Grant of uh, Georgia Shire over there in the <laughs> great US of A. He has sent me this wonderful shirt. Kirk Cycles, Dalton, Georgia. Thank you, mate. I really appreciate that. Put a smile on my face. And also a big thank you to Gary, a friend of mine over here in the UK for uh, calling me this afternoon to say hi and to tell me that he's bought himself a nice little Suzuki Access. Is that right, Gary? I think it. I think I'm right. Brain fried. Uh, hence, no talky talky this evening. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> lots of fun on that, aren't you? Uh, when you go away. Um, yeah, like I say, give us a call again if you can't get that for your burger and sorted out. Right, yeah, it's just a short one, just to say. Um, I'm not feeling it at the moment. I'm really not brilliant at all. Uh, I should come out of it uh, uh, next summer. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Now, anyway, I, I did a little bit of recording the last few days, kind of half heartedly in the shed here. I'm trying to work stuff out and put things here and there. Aren't we, fella? Yeah, uh, so I did a little bit of recording. There is a clip just after this one. Um, it, it's something nothing. I, I was going to delete it, and I thought, you know what? It's just this content of sorts. Just have a look at it, see what you think. Um, I need to watch it again myself to see uh, actually if it's worth making a part two of. I can't remember what it was about. This is how where I'm at at the moment, guys. So I do apologise. Uh, perhaps next week, hopefully next Thursday evening, we'll have a ticky chitty chitty chitty. A giant drinky and a, and a, and, a, and all that. Okay, like I say, Gary, cheers for that phone call, mate. Did cheer me up enough, enough to make me do this little bit of a clip here. Uh, so thank you again, mate. I do appreciate it. And thank you, uh, Kane. Good out, out there in the US of A. Uh, hope you hope you boys okay, and I hope you're cracking on with your Honda stuff. Brilliant. And thank you again for this shirt. Awesome. All right, guys, take care, and I'll see you hopefully next week. Hello, welcome back to uh, Age Restorations, back here in the Shed of Dreams. Look at the state of this place. Yes, I'm going to clean it up. Yes, I am going to do some tidying. And all those of you with OCD, I do apologise from the bottom of my pantshire. Okay, yeah, I still need to buy. No, don't keep on. So this is what we're looking at so far. Good idea. Good idea that. And I've also found some of this stuff. Which is basically the uh, the line with like, a, like an old brake cable stuff. And you've got the wire spring inside. And the PVC covering and little eyelet hooks there. They are going to be stretched from somewhere. Either there to there, there to there, whatever. And I am going suspenders all my bungee cords on there. Because there it's just like a big spider that always gets in your way and trips you over wherever you put them. So I'm gonna be suspenderizing them uh, from the ceiling. I think. Yes, I think I'm right. Anywho, anywho, let's have a look. Follow the finger. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right turn, right turn, right turn. I've just come into the shed. Ooh, uh, that sounds a bit rude. It is just gone at half past one in the p.m. of the afternoon. Uh, forget that clock. I need to set it. Um, it's 15.6 degrees. And it's raining. Stop raining. Raining, stop raining. So it's not a warm day, basically. 15.6 degrees Celsius. No idea what that is in Fahrenheit. It's just... Um, so we need to be a bit warmer in here because I've only got a t-shirt on. Oh, 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 the reason for that, oh, 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 oh. the reason for that is my condition. I sweat like something in a room full of something others, if you know what I'm saying. Right. 
let's test out whilst I work this little beauty. Let's flick it on, flip the bean, and we've got a little. I should really put a mark on there, shouldn't I? A bit of black marker. Actually, I'm going to do that right now. Shitting! Right, nothing too suave. Let's move that up. Oh, okay. All right, well, let's, that's sort of there to up there. That's, that's 180 degrees, isn't it? So let's put it halfway, but that says it's maximum. Who knows? Let's just put it on there. Is it getting warm? I'm just trying to warm the place up a bit quicker. All right, don't shoot me for that. Okay, I can't help it. It's the medication. <laughs> Medications, what you need. Are you getting warm? Yes, it's getting warm. That's fair enough. So, as we progress through all of this mess, that needs to go in the VW Touran. That'll be another video. I changed that yesterday on the uh, on the van. On the uh, Transit uh, 1.8 uh, Connect. Now, those of you that follow the Transit um, series type fixes... You will know that I'm having lots of fun trying to stop this little niggly thing uh, when you try and start the vehicle, okay? It starts perfectly. It doesn't matter whether it's hot, cold or indifferent. It starts beautifully. After a few seconds, it starts to hunt. But when the engine's warm, it drives perfectly. It starts perfectly every single time. Drive beautifully. So, in... Uh, in order to get going with the van in the mornings, you have to glow plug it, start it. After a few seconds, it goes blah, 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 and the, the, turn it off. And you have to do that five or six times. And on sort of the, the sixth time, if you like, it's, it's not a constant, but it will start and it won't hunt. It will just tick over and then off you go. You, you're done for the day. I have changed <clears throat> engine temperature sensor. Uh, high pressure fuel sensor which sits on the uh, um, fuel pump I have changed the glow plugs I have cleaned all the contacts for the glow plug wiring uh, loom uh, radial I've changed this I've changed that I've cleaned out the injectors I have done all sorts of stuff to eliminate many things now there is a on the right hand side of the head as you look in the under the under the bonnet into the engine bay there is another little sensor on the side uh, but this part is like gray or green i think it's green actually who knows it might be gray the connector that goes onto it uh, and it has one prong in the middle so it's a single contact so obviously the body of it this where it's bolted into the into the engine is the ground and the single cable coming in is the uh, is the signal cable is the feed so when this warms up uh, it contacts inside via a little bimetallic strip i would have thought look at bimetallic strip we'll tell you a bit more about that and it completes the circuit you see all the way through now i took it off a little while ago this one on the right hand side of the cylinder head that you get you can get to quite readily and there was lots of oil in it so i squirted brake cleaner in there i squirted wd-40 in there i squ squirted the plug make sure everything was okay i didn't think anything else of it okay uh i ordered this which is described okay as the water temperature switch or the engine temperature switch not sensor switch on the 1.8 tdci early version of that engine which is the one that i have apparently it has two of these the the temperature thingy so obviously one's a sensor and one's a switch the sensor goes in the back of the right hand side of the head i've already shown that in one of the videos 
how the hell I'm getting my words out like this, I don't know. But I'm going to keep going, so please bear with and don't take the piss. Right. Um, uh, come on, brain. Train of thought. Oh, yeah, engine's temperature. This is what, I, what I'm fighting with all the time. It's a neurological, cognitive fucking pain in the arse. You know what you want to say. You can't get your words out half the time. And you lose train of thought very quickly. Anyway, so I managed to get that sensor uh, changed. Uh, but I, I haven't got the switch changed. Now, I thought it was the one on the right-hand side of the cylinder head, you see, this green brassy thing. No. Like I just said five minutes ago, when you when I disconnect the wiring loom, the little plug from that single-pronged, one of these, basically, with a, with a single prong in it, not two, it was oil all over the place. Now... What other sensors do you have bolted into an engine? Or your pressure switch? The Argon. So, what is that swi switch there? It is an oil pressure switch. It's obviously blown. Hence, every time I take the plug off, it's covered absolutely swimming in oil. Now, if your oil pressure switch is blown, you lose oil out of it. Okay, what's right below it? Oh look, it's my turbo intake pipe from the air cleaner. Absolutely, this is after a really good clean. That was, you couldn't see that. It was, I should have filmed that before. I don't know if I've taken a photograph of it. If I have, I'll insert it now. I didn't, did I? No, I didn't. So, that says to me that the oil, oil pressure switch is FUBAR, okay? So, engine builds at oil pressure, and this little uh, switch knows what pressure that is because of the little uh, brass diaphragm inside, uh, and it sends an electrical pulse uh, back to the ECU. The ECU knows all about it, and everything's fine, all right? Now, if you've got no engine at oil pressure because your switch is fubar Will that play around with the, the cold starting? It's a question I need to answer. Anyway, long story short, I have ordered an oil pressure switch, which will go back in to allow the engine to build up oil pressure. All that's happening is the engine's building up pressure and it's squirting it out a very, very fine hole through this brass uh, switch there is a hole in the end of it well if you look into it it's, it's a plate it's just basically a pressure plate so uh yeah so oil was getting through there and coming out there and fucking caking everything uh, uh, above the gearbox in oil and that's the situation that i'm at again because when i did the sump oil leak and the vacuum pump Oil leak. It's thundering. Um, where was I? <laughs> I blew myself off course. Yes, when I did all that, I cleaned that area as best as I could from a distance with some brake cleaner and, and various other degreasants. Degreasant? Is that a word? It is now. I'm going to patent that. So... Yeah, I'm thinking, whack this new switch in. I've changed that pipe, thinking that the pipe was split, hence all the oil splattered over it. You query any Ford for them, and they go, oh, this pipe splits. No, it doesn't. Well, mine hasn't, and this is an, uh, this is an, an original. It is a, a, an Oregano. Yeah, looking at it. Yeah, it's an original. So, that's perfectly serviceable. Anyway, I put the new one on that I bought. Uh, that'll probably split. So, oil pressure switch is on its way. And what was the other thing that I bought that's on it? So, I technically, this is right for my van, but I haven't got a fucking clue where it goes. So, I need to get under the bonnet with a very bright torch 
and find out where this thing goes. It's obviously not a pressure switch because there you can tell because there's no hole in it. This just sits in some part of the engine uh, or radiator. No, it wouldn't be radiator. It's got a very fine thread on it, uh, which would pull out of an aluminium thing straight away. So that goes into steel. Um, need to find where that goes and change this. So that might be the culprit. So I've got two things coming. What was the second thing I've got coming? Oh, I'll let you know in the next clip because I need to look back on eBay. Okay, getting back to the shed. So that's the van. I will get there. I will sort out that little down downside. Um, I don't care about it. Where I'm fixing it? If I can't fix it, if it stays as it is, it stays as it is. The only thing is, I'll be replacing the start motor sooner rather than later because of the amount of starts it needs. Right, back to the shed. I have moved. Come on. Focus, you ugly thing. I have moved uh, Mr. Compressor from there to there, obviously. And I've got the air pressure fixings there. That and that area there is going to be filled up with air and there. Air pressure tools. I did have... Follow the finger. I did have one of those there, didn't I, in the last video? But it just looks out of kilter because this isn't central to that. My OCD was going, no, it's it's crap. It's crap. But there is no work surface there now. So now there is. That metal tray will be going underneath my uh, compressor because there, there is a drain valve underneath which needs to be drained out. And if you don't drain it out, uh, there is slight moisture leak out there and you get oil come through there and water and it's not very nice so I don't want it going all over the new flooring Mr Henry fits in there rather nicely so I put a shelf in there and I put my drills and uh, screwdrivers and not screwdrivers uh, my screws, screw box in there this stuff is basically kick space board yeah, like so, that needs to go along there and under there. But here's the thing under there, kick space, I have removed that and I've put lots of things under there, like the copex, like my old bike stand, like handlebars, all stuff that takes up a lot of space on the surface of, of your worktops and things like that that you don't need to be in your face because you, you only use them once in a blue moon, don't you? And can you hear the rain? I do apologise about that, but there's nothing I can do about it. I can put all this stuff in a huge box and put it up in the loft, but when you do need it, you have to go up in the loft to get it all. So, no. That's that. I do need now to, um, to take off this kick space under here and put the Kenwood fan in it and the other part of the um, bike jack lift. Plus many other little bits and pieces that I don't use per se. Pussy! Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put, I've got a load, I've got about four or five little uh, like draw handles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount them onto these kick space boards underneath so I can just pull them out. Because this bugger under here is so tight. Instead of leave, leaving a couple of mil gap. For some reason, I wedged it in there, and it's and it it is what it is now. So I've re I've got to force that out. I might even just remove it because do I need a kick space under there? Really, that's just being a bit bit of a kitchen fitter, isn't it? Really <laughs> doing the job a hundred percent. I don't really need it there. Yeah, fuck it. I'm going to do that. So I can just whack stuff under there. Right. Uh, also, some oils. And other things, uh, not specifically that, but other things like oils and all that kind of stuff, antifreezes. I'm going to make use of this space because this is taking up quite a bit of space. 500 by 600 and it's empty. So I'm going to put some oils and things like that 
in there to save me some space. Oh my God, I nearly fell out the door. Piss off, Rain. You know, mate, I need a handle here, don't I? And I was looking for that the other day, but I can't find it because it's too shitty in here. If you're new to my channel, you're probably thinking, what the fuck is he going on about? Please go and have a look at some of my early stuff and then work your way back up to now, to, to, to today. And you, you, there is a, a kind of a, a curve to my channel. Yeah. And it, it, I kind of explain as I go along. God, it's not very nice in here. Temperature, 16.2 and rising. Now, most of that is probably my bottom gas. And my being in here, which is warming the area up. I'm now gonna go indoors and drop the kids off at the pool. Lots of kids off at the pool. And we will come back in about an hour. Hopefully the uh, shed pixies have done this thing and put everything away nicely. Otherwise, just gonna check the temperature. We've got an Apache Indian coming, a helicopter coming over, so I'm going to end this there and I'll catch you in a minute.